Welcome to Midpoint, OCC's midweek podcast aimed at helping you connect with last week's message and prepare you for next week's sermon. Let's dive in. Hello and welcome to Midpoint, your midweek connection to Orchards Community Church. Last weekend, we had the privilege of Pastor Forrest preaching. Yay! <laughs> Scared me there for a second. You are so excited. Well, yeah. You you killed it. You did amazing. Well, thank you. Praise God for that. Yeah. It was awesome having you up there. Um, it was awesome. You spoke and and kind of walked us through Daniel 1, verse 1, or chapter 1, 8 through 21. Yeah, verses 8 through 21. Um, it was pretty funny. You were trying to give me the passage earlier, and I was literally like all over the place. Verse 8, chapter 8. <laughs> you were laughing at me as I was like trying to remember what you... I just... Yeah, you had a little vacay going on over the weekend, so we got to get your head back in the game here. I mean, I got it. I'm, I'm almost there. But sermon was, was awesome. You spoke about Daniel trusting in God's guidance and control, kind of as he is after he's been captured and he is... Yes. In Babylon, mm-hmm. and you have this whole kind of interaction with the king and the king's kind of main eunuch and servant and all that, and mm-hmm. um, with the whole food thing, and I mean, it was super interesting. Yeah, I loved, I loved the kind of the way that you brought that um, to light. Let me ask you the question of this: What did you have to leave out of the message for for time? I mean, you had so much research and so much there. I'm assuming that you had more that you had to cut down. What did you have to leave out? There always is. And what I found, even after I kind of got the the bulk, the body of what I was going to talk about and had drawn different pieces together, uh, you still find other things Obviously. that, hey, I could have taken this angle on it. I could have made this approach on it. Yeah. And uh, there's always more. Mm-hmm. You know, one part that, that, I, uh, that I saw that I probably could have pretty easily gone down is, is the comparison between Daniel's life and the life of Jesus Mm. in um, some of the similarities there that uh, both uh, had had decided Mm. that they're not going to defile themselves because Jesus was sinless. Yeah. And Daniel made up his mind with, you know, the training that he had while he was in Jerusalem. Of course, he was in the uh, the royal family or the nobles. Well, he was part of the royal family, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah. he knew enough and had a strong enough faith that he was not going to defile himself. Yeah. Um, neither made excuses. Hmm. They they were put in circumstances. Wow. They dealt with it. They were fully committed mm-hmm. and and moved ahead and did what they could. You know, work with yeah. with the people around them. And it wasn't it wasn't easy for for uh, for Jesus either. Yeah, I like that. I like that. Yeah. Uh, both agreed to be put to the test. Hmm. Okay. Good point. Yeah, I like that. Jesus a lot. had the ultimate test. He had multiple tests, actually, yeah. and Daniel is having multiple tests. And will continue throughout the rest of. Uh, yeah, the- yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Though in Daniel's case, in the end, you know, he was taken against his will from Jerusalem to go mm-hmm. to Bab- Babylon. Um, but then he ended up serving for seventy years yeah. in the courts of three different kings. Yeah. And so he saw not only the rise of Babylon but also the fall of Babylon yeah. and the reinstatement of the uh, the temple artifacts yeah. back into Jerusalem. Yeah. So that's it's so pretty awesome if when, yeah. So interesting. Yeah. So interesting. That is a cool connection. I had not thought about that connection. Hmm? Yeah. So, yeah, you could have easily gone down that road, but. Easily, yep. It would have been, yeah, you would have been pushing time. Yeah. You were right at, I think, 30 minutes. So you I was were, at 30. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, ten minutes. Some of the James will go ten minutes longer. I I prefer to keep it pretty succinct and yeah. and could have gone there, but it would have taken more than ten minutes. Oh yeah, but, you would have been another twenty probably to, yeah. to fully flesh that out. Yeah, that's a cool cool part of that. Anything else you had to leave out for time? Anything else that kind of was in your prep and process that you found kind of interesting that made its way in or didn't make its way in? The the gist of of what I presented was just in the research that I yeah. did. Uh, certain points continue to come up. Yeah. Uh, you know, you read through scripture, you you mm-hmm. you you dig in and, and yeah. see what's what's popping out. Um, the the thing uh, another thing that really popped out to me and I didn't really focus on it too much was you remember when in the first seven verses of chapter mm-hmm. one we found that James was telling us that God gave 
Jehoiakim into um, the hands of Nebuchadnezzar. Mm-hmm. Yeah, God gave. He didn't. He didn't just come in and defeat Jerusalem. Gave. God gave him yeah. into the hands of Nebuchadnezzar. Similar type thing happens in verses eight through twenty-one, mm. where God gave uh, Daniel compassion and favor in in wow. the eyes of the chief of the eunuch, and. Um, uh, toward, after their testing mm-hmm. you know, over the next three years, God gave them wisdom and understanding. I like that. Yeah. So we see that just in chapter one. Yeah, I like that. At least three times that, that came up. God gave them. Wow. Wow. That would have been... I mean, I think you, you... Did you touch on that a tiny bit, a little uh, bit? A tiny bit. Okay. Yeah. You could have gone further with that. Oh, yeah. But that's yeah. Such that a cool, could be developed. That could be a whole sermon right there. Yes. So, well, good. Well, hey, we had a, we had some questions come in, and we always like when those come in. Um, we really want to, you know, encourage you guys and appreciate your feedback. So send in your questions. We'd love to be able to talk through um, mm-hmm. what questions you have and what mm-hmm. kind of comes to your mind. Absolutely. We had one come in um, that wasn't really a question, but it was from our buddy Dave. Mm-hmm. And yep. Dave just kind of wrote this email um, that we saw just along the lines of just a lot of appreciation for the message and kind of where the message then prompted it's it what my understanding was his study and where God kind of led him right from the message into his personal study and the verses that you kind of talked about and where he just was writing to tell us thank you um, and, and you know thanking you for you know for the message yeah. that that God kind of spoke through you and so we love hearing those kind of things and and continue sending in your thoughts or your questions or, or yeah. comments that you yeah. have and you know our buddy Dave we, we we so appreciate your thoughts on that yeah. one so. yeah it was really cool because it was uh, it was just a, a good example of Dave was looking for questions mm-hmm. to yeah. submit yeah. which he generally does and uh, and now Dave's moved back to Nebraska so we yeah. don't get to see him every weekend we miss him but yeah we do we do miss Dave but in in the course of his study. He learned other things yeah. uh, for himself yeah. and pulled the, uh, in different verses through his own Bible study, yeah. through his own reading, his own daily devotionals, put it together with the sermon that he listened to, yeah. and uh, it all worked out. That, I mean, that's the point. That's, exactly. that's the whole goal. And so praise God for that. We're proud of you, uh, proud of you Dave. We miss you. Um, but hey, let's, let's dive into some questions here. First yep. question is this. I love how you titled your message, A Line Drawn in the Sand. Mm-hmm. You talked about this concept a lot throughout the sermon. What does it look like for believers to actually draw a line in the sand? What, is that, what does that mean? I think that's when we, we make the decision. Hmm. You know, when today's culture is, is going to ask us, today's Babylon yeah. is going to ask us to to believe or to do something, mm-hmm. you know, that uh, that we know is against God's word. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. It's in direct contradiction with God's word. Mm. Uh, so we have to say, okay, let's let's stop. Mm. Okay. No, in some cases that may look like, hey, you're at the uh, the company Christmas party and yeah. the folks are drinking, you know, and dancing and whatever, and uh, we've made a decision either we're not going to get involved in drunkenness. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, or just not drink at all. Yeah, yeah. And and the reality is, today we can we can say, hey, we're not we're not going to drink, and generally we're not going to get too embarrassed by our friends by that. Yeah. They will yeah. people will respect that. Yeah, agreed. Um, but that would be one incident instance that we can say, hey, we're I'm just not going to do that. I, th- I think a line in the sand is is just putting a boundary up to protect ourselves in a way of honoring God with our right, life. Right, right. The key to that is establishing that boundary early on. Agreed. Before you get into that situation. And that's what Daniel mm-hmm. did too. He already had a uh, good upbringing and yeah. education of God's laws. I like that. And he was not going to get involved in uh, eating food that had been sacrificed to idols, mm-hmm. not prepared uh, by kosher food laws and, yeah. and that type of thing. For us, we need to make that decision ahead of time as we're scrolling through our phones, you know, we're not going to uh, pay attention and watch soft pornography mm-hmm. and yep. get sucked into that hole of hard pornography. Set, set that line, you know, quickly and, and early. Yeah. Right, right. Uh, idolatry. You know, mm-hmm. today's society would have us, you know, just go, 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 yeah. you know, move up the career ladder at, at yeah. all costs. You know, stepping on toes doesn't make any difference mm-hmm. in some cases. Um, I've seen a, a lot of this, all yeah. of this stuff. Yeah, of course. Um, 
and you have you have to decide ahead of time how yeah. you're going to react to that. I remember distinctly going to a couple of conferences, and uh, speakers would come on the podium and mm-hmm. present, and I know immediately that they are they're not in the same camp I am. Yeah, you know they're bragging and they're mm-hmm. they're uh, bragging on their finances yeah. on their on their model beauty queen wife or whatever the case and it's like i can't even listen to this guy i just wasted two days of my time and yeah. the expense of flying down here yeah and i don't i don't like what he's saying mm-hmm. i don't act his be i don't like his behavior his character or any of that stuff you set the boundary so yeah you set the boundary ahead of time draw the line in the sand i like that that was good very good hey the next question why do you think daniel asked the chief eunuch to not eat the food instead of just not eating the food i like the point you made a point of of the asking Mm -hmm. and why do you think that was kind of a big deal why didn't daniel just go i'm not gonna eat the food i'm just gonna do what i want well because then he would have starved to death Hmm. all right fair enough good point so yeah the simple answer but yeah uh they had to eat Hmm. obviously um but there's more repercussions than that because mm. even before they starved to death, the uh, somebody would have seen it. Noticed, yeah. The king would have found out. Yeah. The chief of eunuchs and his servants, that whole staff probably would have been killed because yeah. Nebuchadnezzar was a tyrant. He was yeah. a dictator and he had no problem chopping heads off and mm. whatever else. Yeah. Um, why, why do you think, though, Daniel chose to, to make sure he asked first? I think he knew that that would get farther. He mm. was looking for a way to graciously um, ask mm. and find favor with yeah. the chief of eunuchs. Yeah. Uh, you know, the chief uh, originally, or he did say, no, I can't do that. Yeah. It's not going to go well. Yeah, I'm going to You're die. not going to look good. Yeah. I'm going to get killed. Uh, what's interesting, though, then Daniel goes to the next level down to yeah. the servant, you know, yeah. that's actually probably the one that he's seeing on a daily basis. Yeah, agreed. And he gets agreement from that guy. Mm, you know, yeah. so. I look at it and I see, I see some some desire on Daniel to stay under the umbrella of authority in some ways. Yeah, to, to it's true. To rebel, but rebel with respect. Yes. And I, I mean, I look at it and I, I see that he is saying, I could easily just not eat or I can, you know, smuggle in food or whatever, but I'm going to do this still with respecting the authority that mm-hmm. God has placed over me. Mm-hmm. Um, and he still held fast to his convictions, the line in the sand, right? The boundaries that he right, set. Right, But he did that in a way that still honored God. Right. Well, and he continues that. We're going to find out yeah. in the book of Daniel that, that it comes up multiple times. Oh, yeah. And we find that he is very consistent. Uh, he and the other three yeah. are very consistent in in their commitment to God and... Um, in drawing that line in the sand, yeah. which interestingly, I, I did not come up with that that title, okay. basically. Yeah. What I did find was in multiple studies that I was reading through, that very thing came up. So I'm thinking, yeah, wow. well, there's something there. Yeah, and there is for sure. And I yeah. think that's a common theme of Daniel is that I'm going to, this is how far I'm going to go and I'm going to go no further. And this is my boundary. Could cost me my life. Yeah. And, and yeah. I'm going to honor God. I mean, we see that with some lions later on. We'll, we'll get into that another time. But, yeah. yeah. Um, hey, next question. In our verses, we saw that Daniel asked to be tested, which I thought was an interesting, another interesting part. What? Why do you think that this? You know, why do you think he asked to be tested, and what do you think this testing actually looked like? Well, we covered why why he yeah. would have asked and graciously and humbly. Yeah. You know, uh, better better to uh, what's the saying? You catch more flies with honey than with vinegar, right? <laughs> than with vinegar. That's yeah. right. Okay. Yeah. So. So he asked. He asked to be tested out of respect. Mm-hmm. Okay. What do you think that testing would have looked like? Well, the, the when he asked to be tested, it's it's see what we look like. I mean, it was a ten day test, mm. and in in ten days, week and a half, what can go wrong? Mm. What's very interesting, if you look look at the that part of the verse where it says. They were fatter in appearance, yeah. uh, you know, yada, 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 in 10 days. That's incredible. I mean, I can, if I did with no water, no food, yeah. no nothing, you might see a difference in 10 days. Yeah. But that's because I didn't have the water. That's not, that's not what happened here. Yeah. He was fatter, better in appearance and fatter than all the other youths. Yeah. Uh, 
that's God being involved in that process. That's God, yeah, bringing out the cause that he wants, so, the, the end that he wants. That's super interesting. Michelle and I were teasing, you know, we were on a, a trip up to Spokane to see mm-hmm. the grandkids, and I was, we were kind of talking about the ceremony, and, and uh, he was fatter in appearance, and I patted my <laughs> my belly, you know, and she says, okay, I said, well, are we gonna, both going to stand up and do the pat our belly thing when, that, when you preach that? No, nah, no, nah. we didn't do that. Decided not to stand on stage and do a little <laughs> drum on your belly. Right. Yeah. Well, right. So it sounds like Daniel just stood up and drummed on his belly, though, probably. So. <laughs> <laughs> you think he was a self-promoter? Oh, absolutely. Look at me. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I bet the te- – I mean, when I thought about this, I remember I, I heard this story when I was little, and for some reason – I remember hearing the story and immediately my brain, I, I guess as kids, we, we used to do a lot. My brothers and I would like jump from pillows to pillows. Sure. And, you know, would separate the pillows and be like run and jump from one pillow to another. And so growing up, I always thought that Daniel was tested, that he had to do like long jumps between from one pillow to the other. And that was oh. his testing was that he had to show that he could jump the farthest from pillow to pillow. Okay. And so it's, I mean, hilarious. You, you preach your sermon in the middle. For some reason, that, that's like, what you thought of. <laughs> that from all the way back when I was little kids, you know, all the way back when I was a little kid that I, I you know, I read yeah. the story yeah. in my little kid's Bible when my dad read it to me. I always thought for some reason we must have been jumping on our pillows the day that my dad read, you know, the study. Probably. And so I've always thought, you know, that's how they test it. Okay, Daniel, ready, oh. set, jump. <laughs> yeah, yeah. In the first 10 days, I mean, maybe yeah. they did. No, I'm kidding. But, but yeah. uh, you know, better in appearance. Maybe they had some athletic tests, but no. And it was only 10 days. Right. The biggest test came at the end of three years. Yeah, for sure. When the time came to an end, and yeah. then they had to go before King Nebuchadnezzar. Yeah. Uh, they probably did have some physical testing. I just and, thought it, uh, it was more funny that that image from all the way back when I was like five <laughs> playing with my brothers oh yeah has stuck with me and has always been a kind of a oh, funny yeah. thing yeah I don't think Daniel jumped from pillow to pillow for his testing but at 15 yeah, yeah. maybe who knows yeah but I think the testing probably was pretty rigorous in some ways and sure. it was it was I mean, in his education and everything yeah. else and physical yeah yeah, maybe. yeah it was probably well-rounded and it proved that God was with him and that God was working this and that because of God's guiding, Daniel was the kind of the ideal specimen in some ways because of God. That's yeah. what he was looking for, yeah. and, and yeah. God profoundly yeah. produced that. Super in interesting. Yeah. Here's another one. How do I pick where to draw my line if I've never truly drawn a line in the sand for God? What do you think? I read that question a couple of times, and, you know, I first went into the, you know, you need to trust God and, you know, mm-hmm. You need to make a decision for God first. Mm, I like that. First and primary, you need to make a decision for God. And when mm. I talked about this this neutrality thing that is seems to be a big deal nowadays yeah. uh, in in our culture in our own Babylon right now, uh, you're okay. I'm okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, everything's okay. Um, you've got to make a choice mm. because if you are standing in in the uh, in indecision, yeah or you just don't want to make a decision, you have made a decision by mm. default. Yeah, I like that. You have not accepted Jesus as your Savior. That's the first thing. Mm. But And then once you've made that decision for Christ, mm. start living it out. Start mm. studying His Word. Because how if you don't study His Word, how else are you going to know mm. how to compare what God's truth is against what today's culture and society is trying to feed you? Yeah, They're trying to get you to do one thing you need to know what what's the right thing to do yeah. or or to believe in something if you don't know what to believe if you don't stand on something yeah you stand for anything yeah you've that heard that sense. before yeah for sure i mean i like that that you have to start with making a decision for god and then you base you draw a line based on the fact that now you are making a decision to follow god first right. and so right i like that i mean i the question really just propels this idea that how can you draw a line in the sand if you haven't committed to first being of God? True. And then you draw a line in the sand based on your relationship with God and draw a line yep. in the sand based on wanting to honor and glorify Him. I mean, yes. I think that's the truth in that for sure. Yep. Well, our last question is this. How do I build my faith in God? You kind of touched on this, and I think you you talked about 
the three uh, components, I think, if I remember correctly. Mm-hmm. Can you flesh that out a little bit more and kind of talk a little about that? How do I build my faith in God? Yeah, to increase your faith, yeah. yeah. Uh, that first one that I pointed out, you need God to be your God. Oh, I like that. Okay. And I talked about, and I've experienced this, mm-hmm. I've seen it. Uh, in some points in time, I've probably done this. Yeah. Uh, your God cannot be your wife's God or mm. your pastor's God or yeah. your mother or father's God. And, I, and that's where I'm thinking that um, even Christians within the church, mm. sometimes you'll ask, hey, why do, you, why do you believe in God? Yeah, no. Well, I went to church when I was a kid and no. I made a statement of faith. Okay. No. But you're an adult now. Yeah. This needs What's to be your you, yeah. belief in God? Make the decision for yourself. Yeah, make the decision for yourself. Uh, that's going to de- determine what your uh, the strength of, of your faith. Mm, okay, I like that. Right there. Um, the second one being to realize the relationship between the strength of your faith and the size of your God. Mm, okay, that's really good. So, little faith, little God. Mm, okay. So, the bigger thing there is to, you know, if you can, if you can increase your faith... Get a bigger picture of God, which mm-hmm. I think I'm jumping ahead a little bit here, but basically your understanding is that uh, with a bigger faith, you can have a bigger God. And that's one mm-hmm. thing I, I did talk about is when uh, the, the inverse relationship of that, if if you have a small picture of God, mm-hmm. then your faith is, is going to be small. Mm-hmm. I like that a lot. Big that's faith, good. big God. That's good. What was kind of, did you hit on the third already, third component? Third component, compose, uh, focus your, your faith on putting the crosshairs on Christ. Mm. Uh, the power that faith draws its strength from. Mm, I like that. So when you are focused on Jesus, that lets you build your faith and all the other pieces come I like, together. I like the crosshairs. I mean, we're, we are in Idaho, so. Oh, yeah. That, that was good. That was smart. <laughs> that wasn't even thinking. Crosshairs automatically just, you know. Yeah. It's Idaho all over. Every Idaho person's going to understand that. <laughs> <laughs> but no, that's awesome. I mean, I mean put your focus on, on Christ. Yep. Yeah. I like that. You grow your faith by putting your focus on Christ. Yep. That's yep. really so good. Strength of your personal, strength of your faith is going to determine what your experience yeah. is with God. The strength of your faith is going to determine the size of your God. Mm. And then realizing that that strength, that faith is going to draw its, its strength from God. I like that. That's really good. Well, hey, thank you. What a, what a what a phenomenal sermon, and and praise God for for where you went with that. And it was yeah. it was really enjoyable. Um, before we end this episode, let's talk about next week. I I know you're not preaching, but what's happening this next week here? This Sunday and Monday is the Wesley and Brenton show. Woohoo! Now, so that's what they call it, the WB show. WB it's not show. really a show, but they 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 get on the stage and they have a lot of fun with different parts of scripture. They do. Yeah. Yeah. And in this uh, scripture that they're going to be going into is when Jesus heals the paralytic That's right. in Capernaum. Capernaum. Yeah. So uh, we're going to hear, hear a little bit of story about some really good friends yeah. that take their... That risk their everything. Other, risk everything. Yeah. They, they roll their friend onto a mat, uh, kind of a uh, first aid yeah. carrier yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're going to... Haul stretch, him up on stretcher. a stretcher. That's the word I'm using. No, you're good. Yeah. <laughs> and then just drop him through a roof. Yeah. Well, they got to haul him up to the top yeah. of the roof first. Yeah. They dig through and then... They dig through the roof and then they lower him. They didn't just drop him down in It's there. more fun to say they drop but him. But they... Though. Yeah. In a slow drop. Controlled drop <laughs> through the roof <laughs> in this mass of people in this, yeah. in this house. Yeah. And Jesus heals this paralytic. It's incredible. That is an incredible story. And there's lots of components to that. Yeah. So I'm interested to see where they're going to go with them. Well, on top of all that, it's, you know, it's Wesley and Brenton's show. They're going to be ruining, ruining the way they, you know, they're going to be digging apart this story a little bit. Yep. On top of that, it's family weekend, right? And so we'll have children and youth and, and oh, everyone, everybody all together. Yeah. Everyone together. Um, the only kids ministry that will be happening is going to be nursery. And so all kid, True. all all kids, all youth will be in the in the service together, which it's a blast. Yeah, super fun, fun music, and it's going to be a good time. Yes, absolutely. How? What are some thoughts? How can we be praying and preparing ourselves as a church body for for this weekend? I think, as always, uh, to put our focus on Jesus. Mm, okay, you know, and to and to step aside 
let God be bigger than us. Mm. You yeah. know, we can't control everything. Okay, good. That's that's part of what I preached about. Yeah. Uh, let God be in control. I like that. Yeah. Good. Well, I'm excited. I am too. It's going to be a fun weekend. <laughs> Well, that's all the time we have for this week. We hope you enjoyed this week's Midpoint. If you'd like to send in any questions or thoughts or or comments into the show, please email or text occpodcast at lewistonocc.org. Yes. Be sure to join us in service at Sunday 9 a.m. and at 10.30 a.m. as well as Monday night at 7 p.m. Yes. And Monday, this Monday, we had a huge crowd. It was massive, yeah. And people took advantage. They were able to do their vacation thing, go camp and go yeah. fishing, and they came back on Monday, and we had an excellent group of guy people which, for Monday service. Which, I mean, Monday is such a fun service. It is. It's smaller, but yet it's the exact same service that happens. Same thing. Yeah. And it's a blast. And so if you look for a little bit of a smaller, maybe feel, a little more kind of an intimate, you know, audience feel, mm-hmm. come to Monday. Yep. We'd love for you to get Monday. Well, we hope to see you all very soon. Be well and know that you are so loved by God and Orchard Community Church. Thanks, guys. All right. 